Okay, it is three past the hour, so we will get started. Uh, g'day everyone, welcome to the Kubert community meeting. Uh, it is the 15th of May and I hope you're doing well. Um, for anyone who is new to this meeting and you managed to get through the first hurdle of adding a passcode, um, if you would like to take the opportunity to introduce yourself, um, you're welcome to drop a line in chat. We'll do a couple of our regular weekly things. And then, yeah, if, you're, if you've um, identified your interest in introducing yourself to the group, we'll come back and give you time to do that. Until then, um, hopefully you can see my screen. Please tell me if you can't. We're going to have a quick look at the schedule. Okie dokie. So what did I say the date was? The 15th of May. Ah. Uh, Seattle Lanes for Brighter, for Provider are voting. Uh, wonderful. So not too much is happening, but um, not to downplay the importance of the CI Lanes. Um, 12th of June is the feature freeze for 1.3. Um, and our GA is the 3rd of July. I always like to bring attention to them. Our upcoming CFP check-in. Um, so QVET Summit, uh, I will add it to the agenda so that people can see it um, when they see the meeting minutes. I'll do that after the meeting. It closes in five days, and so this is the last time you'll hear me talk about CFP being open, but uh, since you are here, please submit something if you haven't already. Um, it's really important that we talk about what we're working on um, to raise awareness and to um, uh, foment a broader uh, discussion on the kinds of things that we're working on, ideas that we have, uh, things that we have worked on, um, demos for things that you are still working on, that kind of thing. And if you are a user or you have uh, Qubit deployed uh, or integrated into, um, into your, I don't know, your business solution, um, we would really like to hear about that particular user journey as a way of guiding others who might be looking at Qbert. Um, and it'll be really helpful for us as a project, but also us as a community. Um, there's also KubeCon and Cloud Native Con North America. Uh, that closes in a little less than a month. I was very excited to find out that... Um, Session eyes now have, let me just open this up, um, have made our lives a lot simpler by they now put forward a comprehensive list of the currently open CFP for KCDs, which are a lot harder to track because there's a lot of them and they're extremely regionalized. Uh, so there's four currently open. Uh, you should be able to see them on the screen. London, Austria, Washington, and Peru. Uh, Lima, sorry. And Lima closes in four days. Um, so if any of those interest you, KCDs, if you haven't heard them say this before, are com Kubernetes Community Days. They are small, um, uh, between 20 to 200 people gatherings around the Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, usually, yeah, they're, uh, you can see that they've got uh, tied to a city. They're, yeah, kind of more uh, city slash state based. Uh, DevOps days, I don't know too much about DevOps days, but they've also got a list of um, CFPs that are currently open and will be closing, and you can see them all there. Uh, so those links I've now added to uh, here between our big um, upcoming and where we'll be. Uh, so if ever you've got some time up your sleeve and you're interested in some of the uh, smaller, more regional uh, conferences that might be around and, and near you, uh, those links are there for you to find. Uh, next week, Daniel must be presenting in Lithuania. And then following that, we've got a whole bunch of talks that will be at DevConf in June. So that's enough out of me. Uh, does anyone have any questions about any of that before we move on? Perfect. In which case, I'll pass this over to Alice. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, is coming or? I'm oh, sorry, I, I can hear you. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> 
<laughs> I should have just said yes. Uh, yeah, I missed that. Sorry. Um, so I wanted just to highlight this um, PR that we have in Kubler CI. Um, maybe if Brian is here, that would be mostly for him. Um, so basically this converts one of the scripts of the, um, the bash script to a Go binary. Um, this is actually one of the projects we had at KubeCon. So yeah, um, my question is mostly how we have like a transition phase. So I think for, for at least one, um, one Kubler CI release, we should have both if there are any issues. But um, yeah, Go binary is a little bit nicer for the CLI and we could also have unique tests to validate the, the script. So yeah, if you can, if you can have a look uh, and suggest how to move this forward, it would be, would be great. Did, uh, Alex, did you want um, Brian to look at this now? Um, I will to see him and Daniel when they have time. It's, um... Okay. Um, it's mostly so how to integrate this in Kubernetes. CI. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Alicia, I can't, I can't really hear you, but yeah, sure. I, I will take a look, of course. Um, I think I'm familiar with the idea already anyway, so because we talked about it at KubeCon, so um, yeah, it sounds yeah. good. Can you hear me now better? A bit better, yeah. Mm, I think in my, the volume of my make is, yeah, anyway, um, is there. So if you, have a look, if you can have a look, it would be great. Yeah, yeah. I'll think about how we can integrate this in soon mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay, there's nothing left on the open floor. Um, if you are struck by anything and you've missed your chance, you can throw something on the agenda and we will come back to it after we've looked at these um, PRs and bugs and stuff. Uh, so we have two PRs um, that could do us some attention. This one came in last week. Um, it's adding a test ID. I don't think anyone saw this. Nice and short. Um, does this make sense? And would anyone like to um, kindly volunteer to have a quick look at this? Usually this, is, usually this is uh, this is per the sig that this test belongs to I think okay I did hear a jed. Thank you. Uh, for future reference, which which sig would that be, Ed? Uh, I don't know. I think the jet is is it is it is it good compute, right? I'm not sure. There, yeah. there are also there are also topics that are not 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 under anything, so I don't know. More test ideas.
Yeah, you can add me there also. I'll take care of it. Took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you. All righty. Nice and easy. I didn't see anything in the mailing list um, that hasn't been talked about or is a continuing thread. So we'll move on to the bug scrub. Three bugs. The first one. Okay, so I think this one, yeah. So it basically stems from this one, uh, in which case I think, uh, yeah, everything was old, so they were asked to open a new bug, and they have done exactly that. Uh, so when the host VM OS is Ubuntu, Kubernetes images do not work. Uh, it's beautiful logs. And they've got all the information. Uh, 128 should work with version one kubert. So who would be interested to have a look at this bug? Andrew, you should give us like uh, three days until we you ask this question. <laughs> uh, uh, that's true. I, I, I do try and not, not uh, bring up uh, things that um, bugs that are super fresh. Um, but here we are. I made a mistake and now we're staring at it. You're here, we're here. It looks like a SIG compute thing. All right, I'll tell you what. I will put that for next week's uh, agenda. Seventeen hours. All right, I, I can put that one. <laughs> also, let's have a let's have a quick look at it while we're here. VM and crash loop back of state. What CPU sockets are added? This has C compute written all over it. CPU hot plug feature. Cycle repeats each time Qvert tries to reschedule a VM to another node. More than enough memory and CPU resources. Qvert was upgraded. What version was CPU hot plug added? I think it was feature gated, and I think there were at least two. Like one, one is the latest one is a rollout, but I don't know which one this is belonging to. Maybe someone from Compute here knows. Jed's here, and am I so mistaken? Jed worked on the CPU hot plug, didn't you? Um, yeah, a little bit. So yeah, he's. CC me, I'll, I'll have a look, but this is really weird. Okay. Weird is good. <laughs> Unless you have to troubleshoot it. Uh, I'll CC here. Uh, Jin. Is, is it potentially because they've upgraded from a, um, a version where they didn't have it and then they've now like if they've just jumped a thing when, when it's been added as a feature gate? That's, that's a good point. That's a really big jump, 10212. All right, well, I'll leave that in your capable hands. And we've got one more to look at. Let's see if it's yesterday. Okay, so it wasn't open today. 
Uh, this is more a question, I guess. VM resource requests and limits. So we'll find scenario. So, okay. Can we go to Kubernetes documentation? Is it manually? Is it safe to manually configure the resource section in the spec as follows? Da 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 da. Da 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 da. I think it's safe to say that um, we have this documented in our user guide, don't we? Maybe not. Um, who would this fall to? I see the word instance type, and it makes me wonder if Lee's here. It is not. Um, should we all agree that this is a question for Lee and Felix? Excellent. A thumbs up. Just in case that's not um, captured on the recording. Media outward. Wonderful. We have just one more thing, and it's a celebration. Um, it is again. So we have a fix. Now Lee's not here. We'll prove this. And Lupo is not here. Um, so I, this is not here to uh, speak directly to it. I'll um, just read what the PI does. Sync cache is hitting a timeout in the VM controller tests after recently being added by Burr. This change simply doubles the timeout to avoid the timeout while still waiting for the cache to be correctly populated. Awesome. Thank you, Lee, for um, fixing that flaky test. And with that, uh, and also for taking unknowingly that last bug. Um, ah, excellent. Larry has added something. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to give a heads up. I've been talking with Brian um, about the AMD node. Um, we're working on getting access back to that. Um, and he's actually, I think, in the process of debugging that with Aditya from my team. Um, but we have a, um, a rec form in to upgrade the node from a, I believe you guys have a Rome box, which supports SCVES. I'm going to be upgrading that to a Milan node so that uh, you guys can start testing SCV SMP. That's it. Awesome. Thank you for keeping us in the loop. Um, it's all right if you don't, but do you have a, an estimated up day time for that? Um, I will definitely make sure that we ping you when we bring it down. Um, it usually is done within like an hour, but um, I will definitely let you know. And then um, Brian was also mentioning we need to drastically upgrade the version of 
K8 that's on there because it's super old. So we're going to be upgrading that to 130 as well. Uh, Larry, one question. Uh, are you in charge only for the CI or do you plan also to do some development work uh, in Qbert? For, uh, because right now we don't support SMP. We have only SCV and SCVS. Right. I'm in the process of, of supporting that. I actually happen to have okay. some insider knowledge um, from a partner of ours who's actually working on it that's mm -hmm. going to be upstreaming it. Um, you probably know the individual, but um, be, as I believe we were told that under NDA, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Yeah, so. don't worry. Uh, it's just out of curiosity if you if you yeah. have any work uh, in ongoing. <clears throat> now, uh, unfortunately, I do not have the cycles to work on the mm -hmm. uh, the libvert enablement for it. Mm -hmm. I am uh, one of the co-founders and maintainers of Verti, so I mm -hmm. am pretty pretty bogged down with work that's going on there. We're we're introducing the configfs tfsm support so mm -hmm. um but maybe in the future <laughs> okay thanks yeah and thanks for uh yeah helping out with that excellent all right well that brings us to the end of the meeting unless anyone has anything that they would like to jump in in the last 10 seconds and add now is your cue I'll take that as a collective no. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us here and for being part of this meeting. Um, I hope you all have Actually, a wonderful... Real yes. quick, one, one more thing, uh, Andrew, if I can. I I, uh, I I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you for always leading and, and taking charge here. I know it's a big ask, and um, I haven't said thanks in a while, so thanks for, for leading the meeting. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it, uh, I, it's a lot of fun, and I highly recommend other people to step up and volunteer themselves to also run it. I'm sure everyone is sick of my voice, um, and I greatly appreciate it when other people um, also lead this meeting, and it gives me some time off. So, <laughs> um, Well, and also, I'll, I'll be disappearing for a large section of the second half of this year. Um, for leave, and so we will actually need people uh, to lead this meeting. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Larry, for providing an opportunity for me to. Sure, um, I, I have done it in the past. That. So, if you if you need so if you can't find someone, let me know, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll help out. That'd be much appreciated. Mm -hmm. All righty, thank you, everyone. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day and weekend, and we'll see you all next week. Thanks a lot for coming. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. See ya. Yeah. Bye.